Yo! What's up, it's Jason. I'm back again with another video and another contest entry. Uh, this time it's for our good buddy Randall Weaver down in the States, aka Randy. I believe he's in Nashville, uh, Tennessee, and puts out some great content. The guy has really good taste, actually. Uh, likes punk, metal, classic rock stuff, garage rock, all kinds of cool shit. Um, so he's got a little contest going on for his 500th video and five years in the VC. Now I checked a little bit in my history. I think I started in the VC about three years ago ish. I think I started like December 2020 or January 2021, something like that. It was the height of the pandemic. Uh, it was a bit of a lifesaver during the pandemic, I think. And I've carried on with many, many videos myself, probably probably about 300 videos or something. So I guess we're kind of averaging like 100 videos a year uh, if we're if I'm doing my math right there. But yeah, Randy's got a great channel. If you haven't subbed to him, you should definitely go down there and, and sub him up. And I'll put a link to his channel and this contest as well. So for the contest, it was pick only five, but I'm going to cheat a little bit, Randy. I'm going to show 10 just because... I have no self-control, basically. <laughs> I have to show 10, 10 records. But 10 records uh, that you've listened to at, like 100 times. And no one is keeping track, exactly keeping track, except for one guy, Steve, at all of the world's stage, as uh, my buddy Brian reminded us in his video entry. Um, there is this one guy in the VC who, who keeps a spreadsheet, and I am not putting that down at all because I'm actually kind of jealous and I wish I had kept a spreadsheet all these years of the number of times he has listened to a specific record um kind of logs it in I don't I don't know if he started from like you know day one when he was like 10 years old but he has been logging listens kind of like how the digital world logs every single thing we do these days but in a much more analog fashion Anyway, long story short, so we'll get get to the records, get to the records, right? So these are records I have listened to many, many, many times. They're pretty older, like they're older records, like probably 30 years, maybe 40 years old, some of them. So if you can consider, you know, I don't know, listening to them 10 times a year or 20 times a year for four years, just add it all up. Now, for this contest, you can also pick five records that you think you will be listening a hundred times to. And I noticed Brian at Embryonic Robot did that approach. I'm going to go more classic with mine. The very first album I thought of immediately when he announced, or uh, when I heard about this contest, was the Ramones' debut album, because I've heard it a million times. Um, and in some cases, I will show the actual copy the original OG copy uh, that I've always had in my collection, which that particular copy has probably been played a hundred times, um, which can be done. You can listen to vinyl many, many times, right? Uh, without it wearing down. Although you'll see there's some pretty heavy wear marks on them. This is not one of those cases. This is a reissue copy. So you got reissues and OGs here. Um, this is a later copy that I picked up. This is the Rhino 180 gram vinyl thing. Probably picked this up like maybe 10 years ago now um but i used to have the debut as a kid and sold it off in that what is like the first what i consider my first ever record purge way back when i was in high school regretted it you know ever since ended up rebuying all those records not that the collection was huge back then it was maybe like 100 records or something um but yeah, this was definitely in there. And of course, some of these records I also listen to on digital platforms over and over. I tried to pick records too that like I kind of listen to almost the whole album, if not the whole album, um, versus some that where I just probably play like two or three tracks. Like The Cramps, for example, Bad bad Music for Bad People. Generally listen to just like you know, Goo Goo Muck and Garbage Man and Human Fly, like three, four songs off that album. Um or Bathory, for example, I generally listen to like the first three songs. Um, never really get to side B often. But these are records that I pretty much played a hundred times and probably listened to the entire album a hundred times. Ramones being one of them. Next up, I'm going to show the one I'm playing right now, or I was playing in the background, uh, Skinny Puppy Bites. Now, I used to have this on cassette when I was younger. Uh, that's where I first heard this album was fully was on cassette. 
probably first heard of Skinny Puppy through videos on Much Music in Canada and uh, totally fascinated with their whole, not only the look, the look was super cool, right? Like super creepy horror movie, goth, but the sound, I love the electronic sound. I uh, love the beats. Um, so, and this is a total classic for me, Skinny Puppy Bites. It's actually not their first album. I think it's like their second album. But this was the one that started for me way back when, and I had the Canadian edition of the cassette. That's a reissue on the network label from Canada. Now, a record that is absolutely an OG and is one of my original uh, records that was not sold off in that first purge, oddly enough. Um, and so this is the record that I've listened to a hundred times, I'm sure. And, uh, this specific copy even maybe, um, yeah, Black Flag's damaged. I'm still not sure hundred percent if it was damaged that got me started with Black Flag or if it was my war. I know. And slip it in. I had sort of all three of those records kind of at the same time or heard them all around the same time, but this album, absolutely killer. And um, I've come to actually appreciate the other singers more these days, like uh, Keith Morris, um, just because I've kind of grown tired of Henry Rollins' voice. Uh, but, you know, at the time, this album kind of like just totally shook me. Um, I, it's also kind of the first time I ever saw or heard a song about depression, I think, uh, in this way. I mean, really, that's kind of, Kind of the running theme in the album, especially side two, you know, damage, damage one and two, etc. Um, but yeah, Rise Above and Six Pack are like party party anthems. I still play this record often. I still play this in DJ sets, not the whole album, but like Thirsty and Miserable, Gimme Gimme Gimme. I mean, they're all hits on this thing, even the cover of Louie Louie. This is the European press, which so it includes the cover of Louie Louie. But um, I've come to find out that. The OG press, the original press of this, the U.S. pressing, does not have that that track on it. Um, of course, the band had a really hard time getting rights to this album because it was, I don't know, signed to some weird obscure label, or maybe it was a major label. I remember. That. Anyway, there's a whole story behind uh, why it took a while to get it get it out. But I've got the Roadrunner version, so there it is, and that's my OG copy. That's my story. Black Flag Damaged. Man, what a classic record. Still play. Still play. It. Another record I still play often, and I could have chose... I could have chose any of the studio albums from this band because I actually play all of them over and over again, but this is generally my favorite Dead Kennedys record, uh, Plastic Surgery Disasters. It's one that sticks the most. I do play Bedtime for Democracy quite a bit nowadays, uh, and the other ones as well, but uh, yeah... Government Flu, Terminal Preppy, Trust Your Mechanic. I had this one back in the day as a kid. Sold it in that batch. Got another copy again. Same version, Canadian version on Fringe Records. Out of Toronto. Alternative Tentacles, obviously, but uh, distributed through Fringe product. Which I love all that stuff from the 80s. Dead Kennedys, classic. Can't go wrong with that. Another one that I listen to all the time. From younger days to even now, um, I could have picked Half Full of Hollow by The Smiths, but I, I decided to pick The Queen is Dead, so I probably listened to them both equally. Uh, but again, an, an album that, like, top to bottom, every track is classic, every track is good. And this is my actual OG copy um, of this record on Rough Trade Sire, Canadian Pressing. And um, used to listen to the vinyl quite a bit. Had it on cassette, too. So I listen to the cassette a lot. Uh, probably nowadays, listen to it more on digital um, from time to time. Not It's not every month, that's for sure. But it's certainly every year I would listen to that record uh, for the last 30-some years. So there you go. Public Enemy next. Got to have some hip-hop in here because this record, when it came out, Man, what a classic. Um, I listen to Yo Bummer's The Show probably a hundred times as well. I really love the debut. In fact, I love the debut more these days than this one because I've played this one to death pretty much. Um, I have two copies of this. So I don't know which vinyl is in this copy. This is my OG uh, original 
or no, this is this is not my OG OG copy of the original because the story behind that is I had this record and I lent it to somebody. This is like the one and only time I ever lent a record way back then in high school. And he returned the record, but not the case, not the cover, which is pretty essential when it comes to PE. Um, yeah, so this is the original vinyl because you will actually see the wear marks on the label and the scratches on this thing. I mean, this thing is just brutal. It does play through, and I have played it through a couple times, uh, mostly because I picked the wrong copy. I do have I have a second copy, hence that cover. Uh, but this would be my original copy, you know, from 1988. Uh, I was like 13, uh, you know, but probably about an 89 or 88. Def Jam, Canadian Pressing, super warm copy. Yeah, the cracks and pops. Oh, yeah, you bet you. This is there's a lot of that in there, but it's still playable. It's still listenable. You know, somebody would probably sell this on Discogs at G+. I wouldn't, but uh, these are old DJ copies as well. Like, I won't go into some of my early, early um, experiments with DJing and not having a slip mat and putting uh, sort of one record on top of the other to scratch with. Hence, some of the heavy wear on some of these records. Yeah, Public Enemy, what can you say? Every every track, classic. If you don't know it, well, you know it. If you're watching this video, if you're watching anything in the VC, you know the Public Enemy album. I, uh, I am pretty sure. You might not know this rapper as much, uh, but you should. Hopefully you do. Schooly D out of uh, Philly. Philadelphia hip-hop. Old school Philly hip hop, um, kind of like that first wave, I, I think, and definitely first wave gangster rap, too. I mean, this guy was like OG gangster rap, you know, maybe before Too Short. I mean, maybe Ice T was, was cutting some stuff at the same time, but it's also a party album as well. Saturday Night, the album. Um, Schooly originally put it out on independent album, I think. I think it's called like Adventure School ED, maybe something like that. I don't have the, the debut in that sense, but a lot of those tracks are on this album, which is technically the second album. And it was on Jive RCA. Canadian Press, this is my OG copy again. I'm going to open it up just to show you guys the proof. No, just to show you guys the wear and tear on this sucker. Um, and I actually just pulled this last night. I was just listening to it last night. Both sides. Uh, did have to get up a couple times because the needle was skipping, uh, just because some of that extreme wear on this sucker. Uh, now again, as a DJ, you don't want to play roughed up records, um, but often when you're digging crates and you see records that are a little bit worn, it's usually a good sign because it usually means the record's damn good. If the record, if a used record is absolutely pristine, it probably mean, it might mean that the record actually sucked. The music sucks because nobody ever played it. But uh, yeah, this one is not in that category. This has been played to death, actually. Man, scratches on this thing. I don't know if you can see in the video the scratches, but I can see them here in the in the regular light. Plus, like, heavy, like, wear. Um, it does play through, though. And uh, I would like to get a, probably a second copy of this. I don't actually have a double copy of it, so it remains my original. I got a CD reissue not long ago I never play I really want to listen to Schooly D on vinyl the most and I have some singles and other albums by Schooly but this is the classic Saturday Night the album 100 times for sure whole album even probably 100 times uh, again like all most of these all of these records I picked are ones that I would listen to um, the whole album, pretty much, or I have listened to the whole album. Okay, three, three more to go. I promise, Randy. Uh, if you haven't cut off by now, like, you can because I've already showed five. But we'll go to the full ten, and uh, probably one of the more recent ones of the batch, uh, in a couple of senses of of the word recent. This is 1981, so it's not that new. Uh, but it was sort of new to me. I I never really heard this replacements album until maybe. 
15 years ago ish probably when i got this reissue the twin tone reissues uh it says it was pressed on vinyl for the first time in over 20 years so it would have been 2000 something um but yeah i totally love this record uh it's kind of become my favorite replacements i still love tim quite a bit and play it a lot but uh just in terms of the track selection like you got 18 songs and they're almost all absolutely killer very memorable side one maybe a little bit more than side two but you know side two has something to do and more cigarettes and johnny's gonna die and side one's got you know hanging downtown auto taking a ride customer just absolutely classic uh more raw punk sound to the replacements uh they're melodic punk uh that minnesota sound and um like oscar du etc they got a little bit more commercial later but this one is is trashy and uh Sorry, Moff, forgot to take out the trash. It's the name of that album. Best replacement record, maybe. I don't know. Essential. Uh, like, if you're going to get... There's like two or three replacement records you have to get. I think that's one of them. Speaking of essential and old school, I just wanted to show this because Randy showed Black Sabbath as well. So, I think it would be Paranoid for me for 100 plays. No doubt. Didn't have this when I was younger. I actually had the one he showed masters of reality um now i don't have on vinyl so that's a whole anyway uh this is a reissue of paranoid but when i was younger i had this on cassette i would play it uh many many times um still play it often i still include it in some dj sets as well nice gatefold on this every track is some of it has been overplayed right like do you need to hear iron man again once in a while Last but not least, OG, OG gangsters here. Uh, Motorhead, probably the Motorhead record, the Motorhead record that got me into them. Um, I I did have a copy of this a long time ago. This is not that one. I finally, finally snagged uh, an OG copy again of the same exact one that I had as a kid. This Canadian pressing with this uh, picture on the back um, of the classic trio lineup one me and the boys but yeah i love it um this record i did not have on vinyl for a very long time after having it originally and um finally got an og copy like i said so this is one that i definitely listen to more on digital uh over and over again you know and i'll say like oh, i'm just gonna play one or two songs but i usually end up just playing the whole album so because ace of spades is is uh one of their best so that's my entry, Randy. Um, congrats again on uh, five years, 500 videos. Uh, people should go and sub him up. He's got great taste uh, in tunes, like I said. And I'll see you guys in the next one.